Hey guys, Boji here. In this video, we're going to explore and learn how to utilize auto layout in Figma. Now, this tool is especially useful in order to create responsive components and to create components which are going to be following a specific structure and a level of consistency throughout a design project or even an entire brand. So let's get started with the basics. The very first thing that you want to do is to actually create a text over here. And in order to create auto layout, it's actually very simple. You can either utilize Shift plus A, and this is how you're going to create your auto layout, which you can confirm by seeing this icon in the frame. Or alternatively, I'm going to use Command Z in order to go back and I'm going to right click on this element and I'm going to add the auto layout from this section right here. Now, this is not available just for text. So you can utilize auto layout for pretty much any element that you use in Figma. And uh, just before we continue, I want to remind you that I recently launched a entire Figma course. So if you want to learn Figma from A to Z in a systematic way, feel free to check it out. I'm going to leave the link in the description for those of you who really want to take things to the next level. But going back to the actual uh, auto layout, you can see that now I can actually add some uh, uh, background so that we start seeing what uh, is happening. So as a basic uh, uh, concept, the auto layout is essentially a container which uh, is going to follow the rules of uh, CSS Flexbox. If you're familiar with it, it's, the dynamics are very similar. So that means that now that we have this uh, containing element, which is going to contain the text, uh, we can now set up uh, parameters like uh, the padding on uh, the horizontal side and also vertically, as we see right here. Now, the cool thing is that the moment that we start adding elements and uh, in your uh, case, uh, you can actually simply add uh, uh, a uh, rectangle so that is going to make things easier you can see that we can now start moving elements around and we also have the ability to change the direction of this auto layout so by default it's going to be horizontally stacked but we can stack it vertically by simply selecting this element right here now the moment that I start adding uh, more elements, uh, you can see how this stacking uh, makes uh, uh, sense uh, in, in terms of uh, how the organization in the auto layout uh, works. So you can easily create all sorts of uh, different uh, components uh, and elements by simply stacking in creative ways uh, the auto layout components and uh, you can even create auto layouts within the auto layouts and that is really where the power of auto layouts work but we're going to explore that in just a moment on top of that you can also adjust the gap between uh, the elements and uh, we're going to take a look at uh, what happens if uh, we start tweaking with uh, the alignment options. So I'm going to make this frame quite a bit bigger. And uh, you can see that here on the right hand side, we have the alignment section and uh, I can easily utilize this uh, to align the component within the auto layout. So even if you have multiple components, you can see how all of them are going to basically utilize this uh, specific alignment uh, regardless of uh, the amount. So this uh, is again uh, utilizing the same properties of CSS Flexbox uh, essentially and uh, you can organize uh, all sorts of different items. So for example if uh, I go ahead and I create uh, a auto layout uh, or actually let's do one thing I'm going to add the text right here. I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller for the sake of the explanation. And then I'm going to select both of these items. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an auto layout within the auto layout. 
So I'm going to go ahead and while I have them selected, I'm going to click on add out to layout. And now what you're going to notice is that uh, I can essentially create uh, alignment properties between these two items within the auto layout and it's not going to change uh, the external auto layout. So this is going to be something that initially you're going to find uh, tricky uh, to basically grasp and understand but you're going to notice that over time this gives you literally superpowers when it comes to creating uh, solutions uh, and components uh, in Figma utilizing this uh, very useful property. So that's that. And the one more thing that I want to talk about is the individual padding. So I'm actually going to ungroup this auto layout, which I can easily do by using shift option alt and a basically that's the keyword shortcut or alternatively, I can simply select the auto layout and click on remove auto layout. And uh, as you can see, once I remove the auto layout, it's going to become a frame. So it's uh, not going to basically not have anything. We're going to have this frame. And uh, if you wanted to, basically, uh, you can remove this, this frame. So very easily, uh, just uh, command or shift command G. And uh, I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to simply leave the Figma logo. Now, talking about the paddings, uh, you've seen that you can organize the horizontal padding as well as the vertical padding, but there's more to it because you can actually select and uh, update the individual padding values. So over here, if I select uh, and click on individual padding, I can adjust the left padding, the top padding, and uh, also the right and the bottom one, which uh, is probably not going to have much of an effect in this case because uh, we do have uh, just this element stuck to the left. But uh, if I go ahead and I duplicate this uh, element and uh, I select or double click on a line top left, you can see that now the auto layout is essentially going to be in a space between. And that means that it's going to cover all of the space uh, that they can take uh, vertically or horizontally. And uh, now if we actually go ahead uh, and uh, adjust uh, the padding on uh, the right hand side, you're going to notice uh, the effect. So this is it when it comes to the introduction of auto layout. We're going to go into much more detail in uh, some further videos, uh, as well as giving some practical applications, how you utilize auto layout within the design system. And uh, even uh, what are the applications that I used with uh, my clients uh, over the past decade uh, working as a designer. So feel free to check out uh, the other videos on the channel and uh, expect more to come soon on this very topic.